Czech Decore is currently, well, the main guy that Liverpool seem to be focusing on, at least media facing wise. He is a player that Liverpool have had on their shortlist, at least for a little while. But it's time to dig into why Liverpool would want him, where Liverpool would deploy him, and ultimately whether he would be worth the money for Liverpool, whether he would even be worth the transfer for Liverpool. Welcome back to the Lawrence McKenna channel. If you haven't already subscribed, don't do it just yet, because we can do it at the end of the video if you've been convinced. Czech Decore is currently a Crystal Palace player, as we make this video. But, I mean, maybe that's open to, maybe that's subject to change in the very short to medium term. Liverpool are looking for a more defensively minded midfielder. And that is why I'm kind of wanting to lay some of this out for you guys. Over the past couple of weeks, Liverpool have been looking at a player or for a player where they basically go, well, look, this guy can anchor a midfield. This guy can do all the things that we need him to do that the other players aren't necessarily strong on. And I did another video on Endo when he signed for Liverpool. Endo has then been presented as a Liverpool player. So I say number three, interestingly, because, well, I mean, you know, if you, if you take number three, you're putting not a huge amount of pressure on yourself, but a lot of pressure on yourself. However, he is the 30-year-old guy, very different profile to someone like a Czech Decore. And I think ultimately he is a complementary transfer to the rest of the midfield. Now, that's partially what it was before Liverpool had good balance in their midfield. They had Henderson, they had Fabinho, they had Wijnaldum, all people who had incredibly complementary skills to other players in the team. They changed it up a little bit with someone like a Thiago coming into the side. Side, and that was a complete change in shift and focus for the side. The same when they bring Curtis Jones in or someone like that. The same when they bought Harvey Elliott. Even, even though they were young players, I think people believed that that would change the shape of the midfield. And ultimately, I think even bringing a Carvalho or someone like that in would have changed that shape. It's hard to say whether in the long run Liverpool went a little soon with their midfield rebuild or at least a little late. The balance just hasn't been there. Now, the reason I speak about the balance in the side, I think, is really important. First of all, without the balance, Liverpool's defence is just completely exposed. But the attack is also completely unbacked. And so they're basically... They're basically going on, or not feeding off scraps, but they're basically going on not having the basis they need to build from, not having the structure they need to build from, and also not knowing when to make the runs because, well, what if your defensive midfielder isn't going to win it back in that area? What if your system isn't going to win it back exactly where you need them to or where you would think they would? That's where Endo comes in, and that is someone who I think will consistently try and win the ball back, be a huge amount of energy in the midfield for Liverpool, be someone who can basically... Uh, enable the other players around him and encourage the other players around him and also be fearless enough to fit in at a very high level with the other players around him that Liverpool can trust him. The question is, can you do the same with Czech Decore, number 28 for Crystal Palace? He's only 23 years old, but he profiles incredibly well in the Premier League at the moment, at least in terms of uh, tackles, defensive actions, and other such things. There are many defensive actions within the Premier League that we need to acknowledge, though. There are interceptions, there are standing tackles, there are sliding tackles, there are blocks as well. And all of those, I mean, all of those he's very good at, but I think Liverpool are looking for a midfielder that can step in, win the ball back while still standing, not having to do something desperate. However, Czech is pretty good at recovering, and that's also great. It's why he's climbed the leagues fairly quickly and actually gone from Mali to France to England in, what, four or five years? In that time, I think Crystal Palace knew when they invested in, in him the 15 million euros or uh, the, uh, sorry, the 15 million valuation, but the 22 million euros that they paid for him, they knew that they were going to get a, at least a, a, a markup on that, right? And that was partly because when you look at a lot of what he does in the Premier League, this is a, uh, I think this is his heat map at the start of this season. This was alongside someone like a Jefferson Lerma, who also had an incredibly impressive heat map. That's him being deployed as one of two sixes or a double pivot within that. And this is him being played as the essentially a single pivot, but really it's a double pivot because of number 19 there as well. And ultimately, I think what we're seeing here is the shape that Crystal Palace took up defensively is one that he could probably transfer over to Liverpool. You've got a really quite high back line there for a side that are in the bottom half of the table, but you've also got a team that are looking to bring as many bodies into the opposition half as possible, which is also what Liverpool are looking to do. I've laid out like a very rough formation here that I think Liverpool will try to follow at 
at least at the beginning of his uh, Liverpool life. Now, you know, I put some names in here, but really it's about the positions rather than the names. You can play the 4-3-3 with him. He can be a single pivot. He can also operate as one of the eights if you'd like. Say Endo plays or say Decore and Endo play because you want to rotate McAllister out or Sobosly or someone like that. I'm not saying that's likely to happen in the Premier League, but I think it is very likely to happen at least in the Europa League where Liverpool are going to need to save their legs over the season. They're going to need to prioritise the Premier League and really they should prioritise the Premier League as well. That's where someone like Decore can possibly step back a little bit. Maybe you bring Endo in or you share that workload. You go slightly more conservative or at least a little more controlling because Endo and Decore are hardly conservative players. But you go a little bit more controlling. You sit two guys at the base of your midfield, say like that. And that's not Trent, by the way. And then you put two ahead of them in McAllister and Hakpo or, you know, McAllister and, well, you wouldn't do that with Nunez, but you get what I'm saying, like McAllister and then maybe Diaz is dropping inside like that. There's a lot of adaptability to this Liverpool formation, which I think at the moment is confusing a lot of people who are analysing it. Before, you had a very, and I mean very clear midfield, right? You had Henderson, who's now Sobosly, sitting back there, rotating with Trent, and, you know, they were very smart. They weren't just predictable, but they're very smart in that way. Fabinho was enabling a lot of that. Now it would be Decore or Endo that is enabling a lot of what Liverpool want to do. But their build-up shape, their build-up play is changing. And in that time, the two players that they want to play as the six or the more defensive player would be Endo, who's coming in from a, I mean, potentially relegation bound, but ultimately he kept them up kind of uh, position and Decore who ultimately at one point last season if Crystal Palace hadn't changed the manager they would have been relegation bound now maybe Roy Hodgson isn't the same but you get my point here like they're coming in from a very different level of football so judging and bringing their level up or imagining that their level will come up is a challenge for Liverpool now I'm not saying this can't happen, all right? P plenty of players have changed and moved profile for Liverpool. Mane did it when he first signed for Liverpool. All across the front line he played. Right wing, left wing, striker. He's done all of those for Liverpool. Salah has been much more fixed, but I also think Salah's profile and the way that he played was very different before he came to Liverpool. Uh, I think he was... He was probably slightly more active and probably had to be a bit more active in that midfield area, or at least in this kind of... He often played off the striker. He could play out here, but I think a lot of people underestimated what Salah was capable of in his time before Liverpool. Cody Hakpo, again, had to change his role ever so slightly, uh, to, slash massively, at Liverpool. McAllister will also be expected to change. Robertson, I think, was already marauding, but has grown into that role. Virgil van Dijk, again, a player they bought for 75 million, and if they were to buy someone like Decore, it would be a very much a Van Dijk type bet. But it felt like Van Dijk was on the cusp of something special. The same with Canate. Trent came into the side and massively grew. Diaz, I think, has already has kind of taken that step up, not in terms of profile, because he was already very high profile, not only in terms of that, but also in terms of other things. Same goes for Jota. I'm just making the case overall here that a lot of players, when they come to Liverpool, have to take a big step up. Fabinho was one of the few players who felt like he was plug and play at Liverpool, who felt like it was like, get that guy, put him in and we're good to go. The only other two that I can really think of in this side, Canate was a bit of a bet. Virgil van Dijk and Alisson would be the other two. Now, I get it. Like, you know, Liverpool have had this transfer policy for a while, but I think when you compare them to the other transfers that Liverpool were looking for, say, Lavia, um, although Lavia probably would have fitted that profile if someone who has to take a step up, change his role ever so slightly. The, really, I think now that we're looking at Decore, if you've told someone at the start of the summer, hey, Liverpool are looking at Decore here and they really want to bring him in, they'd have gone, brilliant, that's fantastic. You know, Chelsea are signing Caicedo, Manchester United a summer ago signed Casemiro. There's all these different profiles of player that we would have said, hey, he fits into that violent of players, right? But the interesting aspect is because Liverpool, the feeling is that Liverpool have missed out on Caicedo now and they are going for what feels like an, a second option in someone like Endo, even though Klopp's profile of him is glowing, even though Klopp said he's very smart signing, even though he's a player who doesn't really have a lot of very extremely high-end football on his legs. That is a bet. He's going to be playing twice a week. Decore and Endo both haven't done that in the past couple of seasons. It, possibly every three days as well. Possibly why Liverpool probably want to bring in multiple players that can play in that position. Liverpool have also lost two players, in the, more than two players actually, in the midfield. Four midfield players this summer. They've lost Tiago. Uh, they haven't lost Tiago. 
They've lost uh, Henderson, Fabinho, Naby Keita, and James Milner all in one summer. All, well, three of which were big contributors to the side, and one of which was Naby Keita. So, it sounds a little snide, but I'm, I'm just being serious, and it's a serious evaluation of him. Now, at the moment, the problem for Liverpool is, I don't know if Jurgen Klopp currently knows, or feels he knows, his best 11 going into every game. Previously, I know that we would have profiled Liverpool's best 11, and we did profile Liverpool's best 11 as that team that only ever played together once, so maybe that's not overall an issue. But what I would say is, it puts someone like Decore and Endo into a very important role in the squad. Someone who anchors the midfield and knows the movements of the other players. Bear in mind, the reason that Henderson was so vital to this Liverpool team, the reason Fabinho was so vital to this Liverpool team, was because they were so good at reading the game, so good at working out where to slot back into that back line, or you know, when, say when Trent went forward, then you have someone who goes back there. Now, some of that work was already being done. Some of that understanding was already being worked up against Chelsea. You could see that Liverpool, their cohesion was coming together, but it wasn't quite there yet. And so what we're currently trying to do is analyze where Liverpool are taking their tactics, which is perfectly fine to progress them, and I think is they're really smart to progress them. But at the same time, we're also then trying to go, oh, Decore does or doesn't fit. Endo does or doesn't fit. Endo is one of those players who, I mean, for Stuttgart, he was being asked to close out games sometimes on in kind of in the middle slash to the right of their centre-backs because they wanted to shut a game down, because they wanted to close a game out. Decore won't be asked to be doing that for Liverpool. Endo shouldn't be asked to be doing that for Liverpool. And whilst it does play into their favour, it's not something you can take directly and go, he fits there. That's why analysing this Liverpool team at the moment is such a challenge and why I think a lot of people are just going, oh, I don't know, so must be negative. Now, one thing that a lot of people aren't really acknowledging here, but I think is probably worth talking about, is the fact that when you take a step up to a, a, you know, a very highly aspiring Premier League side, rather than a side that's just aspiring to stay in the Premier League, the style of play changes quite a lot. And I think Endo and Decore are very key to that in the first place. Decore would be the kind of player who gains you that control. He's a huge presence in the midfield. He's someone who, his shadow, if you're talking about pressing, t pressing terms, is imp imposing. But on top of that, he also allows you to push higher and higher and higher, similarly to what Endo would do as well. Endo, of course, is the kind of player who Klopp said doesn't stop. He will continue just to get in everyone's faces throughout the games. He's going to be someone who's relentless when he's out on the field for Liverpool. And not only that, when they're losing someone like a Hendo or even if you don't always have that kind of motivating presence in the midfield, Endo is that kind of player. Decore, of course, similarly, will be a... a I want to say an anchor in that midfield, and that allows Canate, Van Dijk, those kind of guys to relax a little bit more. It allows Trent to get much further down. It also allows Robertson to do a lot more of what he is currently good at, though I think he is repositioning and retraining quite well. And I think on top of that, it's very different to what Chelsea, the Chelsea game was to Liverpool. Liverpool want a lot more control this season. Liverpool want a team that they can basically go, right, we're just going to control this now. You remember how good they were in that run a couple of seasons ago? That was because of control. That wasn't necessarily just dynamism. And that led to great moments. But that wasn't the most watchable Liverpool side. And I think this Liverpool side are weirdly quite watchable now when they're going forward. There's a, there is a dynamic nature and element to it where maybe you didn't see that before. And the players they're getting in, the players they now have, are even more dynamic than the players they had before. The problem being, you often need an anchor for that. Decore, Endo, those kind of guys are going to be that. And I get it, like, you know, McAllister and Subasai were more than willing to go back, more than willing to put in a defensive shift. But within that, that's not going to be the key tenet of what they want to achieve as the two eights. Those two want to be as high up as possible, creating as much as possible. Decore Endo will be mopping up behind that. And you, that's something you have to get used to in a Premier League team. It's something Fabinho just stepped into because of, well, where he come from, where he was going, and what he, what he was trying to achieve in the first place with Monaco and those kind of teams. And also, I guess, his pedigree, which is very different to Endo and Decore. It's not to say they can't be trained to do that, but it's a very different style of play. And, you know, when Van Dijk and Canate are basically half line, halfway line dwellers at this point, you need players who can cover for them and who are able to recover as well as they are. That's really key to this side because it's a very strong identity within this team. They had a really strong identity before, and the two players they're looking to bring in, and the two players they have already brought in, all have strong identities. McAllister, very strong identity. Soberstein, very strong identity. Decore, very strong. Endo, extremely strong. 
Soboslai, captain for his international side. Endo, captain for his international side. Decore, potential to have that same kind of profile, should we say, not only within his own country, but outside. And partly the issue here is that obviously, you know, I think we're looking at Premier League minutes. It would be great to have people who are Premier League minutes more like McAllister. But actually, that's where the premium comes. The valuation of Decore is actually 40 to 50 million. Liverpool, the price they'll pay for him, unless the Premier League tax in the first place, will be much closer to 70, 75, 80 million for him, at least over the lifetime of a contract. Endo, similarly, really great energy, high profile. That There's a lot in here that I think needs unpacking in terms of what Decore would be walking into. But he'd want to be walking in being a starter. Endo will want to walk in being a starter. And I think what Liverpool are realising or already knew was that Trent slipping into midfield is lovely. In the long run, if that becomes something that you can't always do or tactically people work that out, which they will do in time. You know, remember at one point, 4-4-2 was the prevalent thing. Then it was sitting two at the base of midfield. Then it was having, you know, 4-3-3. So one at the base of midfield, someone essentially the Makaleli role, but, you know, then progress further than that. They then had to go even further down the field. You wouldn't sit deep. You'd actually try and impose yourself on the opposition. Pep Guardiola, Klopp, all these guys tried to win in very strong ideas, with very strong ideas of what it was that they wanted to achieve. At the moment, and against Chelsea, Liverpool had a strong idea of what they wanted to achieve in that game. But with adaptability, with managers needing to be able to make changes on the fly, with managers being much more reliant on players being able to read a game, but also looking over them and going, I need to change my position to go here. Having these kind of players who can read the game and shift as they go is so important. This is why it's a huge blow for City to lose KDB. This is why they just locked Leonardo Silva down to another contract. Why Phil Foden coming through and learning from day one what Pep Guardiola wanted was so important. The same goes for Arsenal. They signed Zinchenko because tactically he's smart. They signed Gabriel Jesus because tactically he's smart. They signed Timber and that's a big loss for them because tactically he is adaptable and smart. Liverpool are trying to find similar profile players that fit into the shape of what Liverpool are trying to do here. And Decore would be a huge piece within that. If you're taking a 70 million pound bet and you're putting him there alongside a Trent or even to anchor a midfield where Robertson can be bombing on, Trent can be bombing on, you need someone that you know is going to be there for the long run. The previous profile of player that Liverpool went was Chouameni, Caicedo, uh, I mean, even they would have liked someone like a Camavinga or a Valverde or someone like that. These are all names that I think get Liverpool clicks on online, but ultimately it will be someone like Decore or Endo who comes in because the financial model dictates that at Liverpool because making a £110 million bid for someone like Caicedo shows that Liverpool have the money when they need it, but ultimately they will only, and I mean only spend that level of money when they get the absolute one of one or the diamond in the rough that they constantly feel that they will need. So I get it, like you're gonna see Hakpo drop a little bit deeper, but you're gonna need to see him dropping a lot less deep now, or at least a little less deep than he did in the Chelsea game, because actually he was part of a midfield three that looked a bit more like that, and McAllister was deep, and so you really had Jota inside, and there was, it was a completely different shape, I can't really make it right now. But the, the fact is, like if Liverpool want to, if Liverpool want a bit more control, they might even do this. You want Trent out wide delivering a ball in, similar to sometimes when a midfielder like, say, KDB drifts inside. You might actually sit Decore and McAllister at the base of that midfield and put like a, more like that almost, ahead of them. That's not dumb, by the way. Maybe Soboslai goes on the outside. Don't know why I keep grabbing Hakpo instead of anyone else. Soboslai might go on the outside. Soboslai might go there. Trent might come in here and be able to operate inside. That would bring Canate over. That would bring Virgil van Dijk there. It wasn't unusual last season that we would see Trent ahead of Henderson and Fabinho. Maybe not more towards the end of the season, but there were times where he was just wondering. There were times where for the England international team, we saw Curtis Jones stepping inside and he was running things in the base of that midfield. What I'm saying is, this Liverpool adaptability is a real positive. I think it's really strong for Liverpool. But what they really haven't yet hit upon is that level of understanding which is going to get Liverpool into the top four permanently. Now, 
I've seen some ridiculous calls that Liverpool should accept mid-table because of this side. There is real quality, technical quality within this side. And adding Decore into that, adding Endo into that, adding leadership, adding... By the way, Endo, interestingly, Klopp has never won a league title without a Japanese player in his team. Kagawa, Taki, Endo. I'm just saying, maybe sometimes they bring in Japanese players because they go, you know... You know, there's one of two Liverpool players now that have been Japanese. I mean, you, that's won the league. Maybe it could be the other. But you get what I'm saying here. There are, there are very specific things. I'm not saying that Klopp got him because then he will win the league. But I'm saying there are very specific things that Endo did. He doesn't have a lot of miles on his legs in terms of an overall professional career. He's very, he looks after himself very well. I think Liverpool, and here's the key. Klopp spoke glowingly about Endo's personality when he first signed. Every one of these players has got a personality that Klopp wants. McAllister, Soboslai, big signings this summer. They left and they had two players that ultimately when Klopp looked at them, he went, you know, Fabinho and Henderson and, you know, Alexander Arnold, uh, Alexander, uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and on, by the way, that's five midfielders. I didn't even list Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain earlier. All of these people are the kind of personality that Klopp wants in the team. So when we're talking about, oh, you know, oh, we just need to get a name in, the reason Endo was one of those signings is because of personality, because of what he brings to the side, because of Trent, Robertson, all these guys who want to bomb on. You need someone who is willing to put their ego to one side and go, I can cover for that guy. That's why Fabinho was so important. That's why so many guys within the team are so deeply religious, so deeply morally fixed in where they are. Because Klopp needs people that he knows he can motivate, encourage, bring to another level, knows that he can rely on to have a fairly consistent mentality. Profiling a player like Decore, and I think a lot of people love Decore at Crystal Palace, you know, he was voted player of the season last season uh, by the Crystal Palace fans, all those kind of things. That's really important. But Klopp needs to know he can rely on that man one-to-one. -one. It can't just be a professional that comes in. Hence why Klopp made that joke in the press conference earlier this week where he said, oh, you know, we got an agreement with the club, we didn't get agreement with the player. He's alluding to the fact that Liverpool need a direct relationship with a the player they know they can trust. It's why other players have possibly had issues with transfers at Liverpool, but possibly when Klopp meets them, possibly when the club meets them, possibly both. But it's worth just noting at this point that Liverpool, when building these kind of teams, because we don't, they, they don't go out there and spend a lot, doesn't mean they can't, just means they don't go out there and spend a lot. Liverpool, therefore, need to go in for someone like an Endo, need to go in potentially for someone like a Decore. And maybe you were looking at Lavia and going, hmm, I mean, I like this, but what's the long-term deal here? I'll be interested to know what you guys think. I'm wondering how much tactical, you know, the tactical side of it needs to improve, right? Decore needs to improve his passing if he comes to Liverpool. Essentially, he would be a defensively minded player that I think enables others. But I'm wondering, can Liverpool spend 70 million on him? They probably know they can coach him up, but they might look and go, can we make it through this season with this? And then go next season for someone else that we know that we can get. Or will someone else come up as a profile? Or will there be a better fit? Or will Bicetic be good enough to come in? I've not even spoken about Bicetic. So these are both senior players who want to play regularly. It's really important that we acknowledge that. I think the, the key for me is signing the right player. That's why Hen Endo felt right. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, you're, you're apologizing for everything. I'm not doing any of that. What I'm saying is, if you sign Endo, if you sign a player that you know Klopp wants, that's 10 times better than signing a player the fan base want and then going, cool, we'll make that fit. Profile is really important. That's why when I looked at Endo, when you looked at previous managers who loved him, when you looked at... The fact that, it, that they thought that he would fit into the team really well, they knew that he was highly motivated, all these kind of things. I think that's super important for Liverpool, especially if they want long-term projects, which all of these players are. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching the Lawrence McKenna channel. I will chat to you guys again later. Much love. Bye.